Then you motion over the first part of the portion, so resolutions and ordinance and go up. Make a motion for the first part of the portion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris Myers, 184 Malibu Lake Boulevard. First, congratulations to the, the winners of the recent primary election. Apparently, I guess being on the town committee is a charmed position, <laughs> and it wins your primary uh, races. So, congratulations to those of you who ran, and um, I appreciate your service. Um, my uh, statement tonight is in regards to Resolution 145-23, the sale of surplus land. Um, I have a few questions about this, this proposed sale. Um, I guess I'll just go down the list. Uh, could you tell me who chose to sell these properties? Township that was you? Township committee. The Township Committee as a whole? Pretty much. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, what criteria for choosing these properties was used in choosing which to sell and which to hold on to? multiple times before. see if these properties are 
environmentally sensitive, as my one day of research pretty much, I think, conclusively has shown. I have my sources on there as well, so you feel, feel free to verify yourself. Uh, so you me did wetlands maps on all these, the same things you did? Yeah. So do you think the town should own every swamp in Franklinville? Is that your position? I think, that, I think wetlands are environmentally sensitive properties. Well, that's that, not a debatable. It is. They are environmentally absolutely. sensitive. So we're not telling anybody they can do anything with it, but if you had five acres next to your house and two acres of it was wet, the town should And the Environmental Commission very well may come back with that recommendation. My concern was the fact that the residents only had 24 hours with which to look at these properties. There's three new properties to look at. The rest have been on the list from before, but this is a brand new round of sale. But, so, that, that, they didn't look at them. You, you can, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is just my request. You can disagree with that request. That's fine. But as something that appears to be environmentally sensitive, I would just request that the Environmental Commission look at this and this, this resolution be tabled for another time. Not to, to force them out. Uh, sell in the future, but just perhaps maybe we can be more informed and more educated about it. Thanks very much, and I appreciate your thorough explanation. Good evening, Barbara Halpern. Um, Mr. Finley talked about a Rosemont property that's not one on the list. Is there a property you forgot to put on the list? Okay. Okay, I find it interesting that Sam may have looked at this when we have a property that's under Rossi already. That's the property across from the lake house on Fort Shell Road, block 33128. It's not eligible for sale because it's on the Rossi. So you need to amend this list um, because that would be wrong. And it's not possible. nine. One two or one two eight? Uh, three three one two lot eight. It's the one listed on Porch, the first one on Porch Town Road. Isn't that the house? Isn't that the house one? No, the one with the house is the last one listed. Okay. I had the property there. Um, is it the one on the corner? Um, I'm, yeah, I, I suggest that you leave it off because it, you know, if it's on the Rossi, which is what, when I did my research, it was. Since you now have, I believe, Chris gave you maps, mm -hmm. they tell you that this is that lot. Um, you know, it should be taken off the list this evening so that you don't make that mistake. The, the one on Porch Town Road, the last house listed, I wanted everyone to be aware that, yeah, I knew it was on the list before and it didn't sell, but I also checked DEP maps and we still have a area shown on the map of contamination from the gas station in Franklinville that extends down Forgetown Road to this area. Right. So anyone who purchases this property, they won't be eligible for spill fund to pay for a conditioner for the volatile organic compounds that are in, will be in any well that is drilled in that area. And they may have to drill a more expensive well to avoid the contaminants when they apply, if they apply to replace the well also. Um, I did take an, uh, you know, a lot of these are wetlands. The first one is all wetlands. Um, the, really the only thing that looked buildable when I looked at all of these, obviously Shea Avenue, which is not going to sell, and it didn't sell last time. But, uh, on the two Grand Avenue properties, lot 16 and 17, I did get an opportunity to look at those today in person. 
And I would be concerned about the fact that when you walk onto this property, in the front of the property, the vegetation is not normal for an undisturbed forest. And it, there is debris, and I believe that they used this at one time as a dump. So whoever buys these properties, if they're going to develop them or use them in any way, they should be aware that the private properties are a dump. Otherwise, I actually would have been interested in obtaining these properties, but not buying a dump. So thank you. Good evening. Uh, Barbara Dougherty, Clearfield Avenue. I had a question about Resolution 14823, the improvement of Williamstown Road. Could you uh, supply some details about that? Yeah. 148-23, a grant application to have a contract in the New Jersey Department of That's Transportation. Road, road paving, right? Paving. So just repaving. Can you tell me? So we start for. Oh, we're going to do the whole thing. Yep. In phases. In phases. Okay. Is there any consideration to a traffic light at the intersection of Williamstown Road and Grant Avenue? I'm sure that the police can help you verify how many accidents there are at that intersection. That's a test. Okay. Grant Avenue. We own that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then Monroe goes to the other. If it's not a, a traffic light, a blinker rather, maybe like a couple hundred yards on Grant Avenue before you get to Williamstown, a second stop sign, there's ones that say stop sign ahead, you know, it's got big red lights to go all around it, because people don't see the stop sign that's right there at the intersection, they go flying through there and boom, you can hear it for a hundred yards. Thank you. Thank you. That was the timer. <laughs> I think, oh, that's an interesting ring. <laughs> Where is this house from? Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Harry Kennedy, 1578 Fries Mill Road. I don't have the agenda in front of me. Uh, one of the uh, items tonight, I believe, is uh, naming a recycling coordinator. Is that correct? And uh, that will be an additional fifteen hundred hours. Correct. And how many hours does the person taking that position work at the present time? Thirty-five. Thirty-five, I believe. Not that correct? Correct. So now she'll be working forty. Right. So there'll be an extra five hours a week pay in addition to the uh, fifteen hundred hour stipend, I would imagine. Okay. No, it's not that it's a gigantic deal, but it's just somewhat misleading as to what the actual compensation would be. The other thing I had a question about, Mr. Mayor, was the uh, listing of the uh, spring sale. And I don't expect you guys to follow the Vernal Equinox too often, but uh, having the sale on July 3rd is somewhat interesting for us. I'm sorry, I'm late, right? Yeah. Who would have that date? Oh, good. September, uh, July 18th. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. That's an excellent idea. July 3rd would be a tough day for people having a long weekend we can to come to town. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, great. Hey, excellent idea. Always glad to see something good and productive happening. But in regards to that uh, land sale, uh, Mr. Finley and I had a discussion a while ago about uh, Mr. Finley's role in taking a potential uh, marijuana growth person around to look at sites. And some of the sites that are listed there, uh, that he took them to, again, I'll ask Mr. Finley, did the uh, marijuana growth person uh, visit any of those sites, Mr. Finley? Is three, Mr. Mayor? Uh, the uh, growth 
the facility for a marijuana plant or those part of the sites that were at Mr. Oh, no, no, you said that before. I didn't ask you. I said through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Finley. Mr. Finley said he took them, not you. Okay. Yeah. And they're both on the sale list. 77 acres has been on the sale list. No, I know, but it's on the sale list again, and the Grand, and the Grand Avenue site is also on the sale list. Good. So there is the potential that those could be used for uh, growing marijuana in that particular spot, as well as uh, a marijuana plant. We said that possibility exists. The other question I have, Mr. Mayor, you, you guys, again, which is the normal procedure, you said a minimum bid. But you also put language in there that you could reject all bids. Uh, could you explain that? Or could your council explain that? I, I know, you don't have your regular council here. I, you have your substitute council. It's small world. I just had lunch with his father on uh, Sunday. Um, no, it was your father. Your father was there with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> but I know the difference between your father and your uncle. <laughs> We're rejecting bids. That's by statute. Um, since you're not present during the auction, the auction goes off, and he has the right to offer the property for sale, and if they do not deem that the sale price is appropriate, they do not change their mind, they don't want to sell it. You can still. They, they can reject that. Did, just like the people with the last auction bought the property and then changed their mind. We didn't have to accept allowing them out of buying the property, but you guys did. So it's, it, it all ends up, this is it's a very transparent process. The property is put out there, advertised, and actually put out. Then there's an actual auction, and then you guys are all given contracts to tell them whether you want to actually go through the contract. And the people understand that. And again, it was... I mean, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you have a minimum, I, I'm, I'm right. guessing the sale price is the minimum. But, but you don't have to accept it. You know, some of the law, you decide you don't want to sell it, you don't have to. People don't really want to understand that. I would say that if it starts at $1, then maybe you can make that case. But if it's, you're setting a minimum price... I, I understand what you're saying. It's the same the one property we had last time I sold for 20000 people did not complete the transaction. You didn't have to let them out of that, and, but you did. So, and they forfeited the cloud out. That's fine, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your explanation. I don't need another comment. I just want a list of these properties. Are they in here? Is this folder this year? No. no. I think that we all mind, right? Yeah. Turn there. I'd like to know what the house numbers are on Grant Avenue that are going to be. Thank you. I don't think they're house. They're going to be hot in my neighborhood. Great. <laughs> it's not a permitted use. What? It's not a permitted use. Sometimes things happen. Good evening, Jason Brandt, 688 Rosemont Avenue. Mm -hmm. New Philadelphia, Georgia. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say this absolute truth. Um, the statement in the public notice that bids will be accepted or rejected is standard in all public land sales that I've ever seen. I'm actually attending a sale tomorrow in the city of Millville, and I have their notice having to be in my pocket in the exact line. And their notice says the city will accept the highest bid or reject all bids. So I don't think that's something that this municipality has put in their notice. I mean, I think it's standard procedure in all public sales. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, you're playing in the area. If the committee does approve the two properties and the structure, I will post the time to be prepared to enter onto the property and inspect it. Yeah, just for context, I'd stop to see Mr. Finley and ask him if there's going to be some sort of public access to the structures. Um, and that was your answer. So, but thank you. So. I 
just wanted to follow up with what Harry and Jason, I'm sorry, Leo of the Salad 560 Delta Drive. I just wanted to follow up with, with what um, Jason and Harry were saying. And I understand it may be standard language in many cases, but I still think there's something uh, wrong about having a minimum bid and reserving the right to reject the highest bidder because it can't be based on price. So unless, you know, you suddenly decide you want to keep property that you had plenty of time to review, I don't see any legitimate reason why any bid would be rejected. I think everyone's nervous from the original, and I quote, Shady Land deal of the woods behind Oak Avenue, um, because there was no minimum bid, and the bid was $9,000, it was very low, and the township committee uh, could, I guess, could have rejected all bids, but you know, choose to accept us. I understand the concern, but here you have put a minimum bid in. And I am um, a little bit curious with the minimum bid at 50% of the assessed value. What is the um, basis for that? Just a some of them, some of them listed before and never sold. So I think it was 340 at 75% before. So I'm just a little bit Okay. But just out of curiosity, do you anticipate any reason why you would reject the highest bidder? I didn't really think about it until we just talked about it, and it didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so if it's if it's low, low well, that's the or if it's part of something, if not, then we'll figure it out. So if it's over the dollar, then I can see you can do that. Right, exactly. All right, thank you. Nancy Kennedy, 711 St. George Street. I guess it's kind of a silly question, but I feel bad for Mrs. Dougherty because if it's not an approved use for marijuana in that area, then I'm wondering why our administrator, while on the clock, wasted his time taking somebody to look at it for a marijuana purpose. So we just ask the committee to bear that in mind. Thank you. I need a motion to close the first public portion. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion to approve the correspondence and reports. Make a motion to approve the correspondence and reports. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the minutes from May 23rd, 2024. Motion to approve the minutes from May 23rd. Second. All in favor. I'm going to abstain also. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you the motion to approve the bill list. Make a motion to approve the bill list. Second. Yes. 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 Make a motion to approve the solicitor's permit. Make, to make a motion to approve the solicitor's permit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alright, resolution. Resolution 12323 authorizes the Council of Franklin Minister to sign complete and collective bargaining agreement with the New Jersey State Police Benevolent Association with the 123 Patrol Officers and Corporal. Is that why you're here? That's why you're here. Let's go your head on the TV. Make a motion. Uh, 123 Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 12424 acknowledging and directing the task for administrator to complete and submit an application for consideration of 50 year 2023 LGOT uh, Lead Grant Assistance Program Rental Instruction Grant. Make a motion for R12423. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 125.4, many views and work hours of the Anna Pisci Act and adding additional duty of title research, researching for you. Okay, and just for uh, clarification, I just want to make sure that that's not going to affect any other employees that do hours done at the recycling center. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, make a motion for all one twenty five twenty three. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Resolution 12623, amending contract with Tina Hayes to coincide and negotiate Chapter 78 Health Care Program. Make a motion for R12623. Second. 
Yes. 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 Resolution 12723, amending contract to order for the email. Coincide with negotiating Chapter 78 health care. Make a motion for R12723. Second. Less. Yes. 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 Resolution 12823, authorizing the current executive committee for the council committee or the council of the uh, do we have to state any reason as to why on that? Of course not. Okay. Make a motion for R12823. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 129.3. Acknowledging and directing the Council of Administrators to complete and submit an application for consideration for fiscal year 2023. New Jersey DEP to a MS4 permit grant in the amount of $25,000. Make a motion for R129.43. 23, sorry. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 13124 is pending acquisition of farmland preservation development easement on lands. Big measure for R13123. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 13123 is the purpose of development easement on farm property for Anthony and Balloon. Junior and Thomas L. Belong on block 6805, lot 4.01 and 6. Make a motion for R132.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 133.23, approving the purchase of the development of the farm property, 4.03 Danco, and then block 6805, lot 2. Make a motion for R133.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 134.4, authorizing tax collector to grant tax exemption for totally disabled budget. Make a measure for R134.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 135.23, authorizing tax collector to finance offer to refund overpayment of tax. Make a motion for R135.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 136.23, authorizing tax collector to finance officer to refund overpayment of tax. Make a motion for R136.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 137.4, authorize the tax collector to refund all the payments back. Big measure for R137.23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 13923, introduction of the township, Franklin Township Municipal Budget. Make a motion for R13923. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 14023, authorizing the first time hire of Cinco Amy for police records department. Make a measure for R14023. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 14123, authorizing the first time hire of Public Works for the Ministry of Intern. Make a measure for R14123. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 14223, authorizing national no doubt, bounce house and attorney. Make a measure for R 14223. Second. 
Yes. 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 New Jersey State LSC cap completed in final review. Need a motion for R-143-23. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 144 also has the National Night Act fireworks. Need a motion for R-144-23. Second. Yes. 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 Uh, resolution 14523. What? You. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Resolution 14523. Uh, can I get a motion to approve removing 3312 30, lot uh, 8 on Kitchener Road? Make a motion to approve the removal of lot 3312. Lock 8. Lock 3312, lot 8. Porch Town Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You got that, right? We got a motion to, uh, and again, that sale will be held. Uh, the auction of the July 18, 2023, except rejected committee, will be held at the committee meeting on August 8, 2023. And we won't reject them. Uh, so, resolution 145.3 authorizes the sale of surplus town owned property by law. Make motion for R145.23. We don't have to make note of that one other property again, do we? Okay. Second. Yes. 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 Uh, resolution 14624, authorizing tax collector chief finance officer to refund the overpayment of tax. Make a measure for R 14623. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 14723, approval to submit a grant application. And execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Green Stone Road Improvement Plan. Make a measure for R 14723. Second. Yes. 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 Resolution 14824 approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Green Stone Road Improvement Plan. Make a motion for R 148.23. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a motion to go into public session. Make a motion to go into public session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Mayor, I'd like to propose resolution R 149-22. Proposing employee discipline in accordance with the recommendations of the hearing office. Make a motion. R 149.2. Uh, 149.22. Second. 23. 23. 23. My fault. I'm going to count what you said. Okay. Second. Yep. Yes. 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 Uh, I'll take a motion to open the second public portion for any comments. Make a motion to open the second public portion for comments. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ralph Travelloni. Ralph, you, you and Jason don't need to stay. Okay. I think you're okay. Okay. Thank you for attending that meeting tonight. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I saw your name on the electronic board, yeah. It just was up there. I, I didn't know why. But, uh, I was spying. Okay. <laughs> uh, the meeting she's referring to was a preservation meeting uh, on the county level. That's why I'm here at this time in front of the day at Tyus. Uh, thank you for voting resolution of 131, 132, and 133 for open space preservation, farm and preservation plan. I, I know that this township committee is committed to saving open space. I know that you believe as a township committee that we are a rural community and your talk backs up your work. Okay? Or your walks backs up your talk. I said it wrong. Okay? I'm just a dumb farmer. Just walk up. Okay. And then also, as you know, this year we're supposed to revisit our master plan. And our master plan, a lot of people during those warehouse discussions talked about a rural character. And I believe that you passing those three resolutions is an example that you're buying into what the townspeople want, and that is to maintain our rural character. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Hello. Hello. Karen Shaver, 212 Kendall Avenue. I am on the board of the Library Trustees. I want to know what the status is of fixing the air conditioning in, this, in the library. Matt? Matt? So as part of the budget, we do have a capital improvement plan, uh, which is part of it. We need to get some estimates. Uh, and the estimates are in excess of So are you fixing it or are you replacing all of it? Okay, because it's it's just starting summer and it gets hot in there. The library. The library. The library. It's the center oh, hallway. hallway, right? Right. It's yeah. well, no, not the hallway. No, it's the yeah, it's the lobby part that we just re renovated. But don't forget, our, our counter is out there now with our employees, and they sit out there all day, you know, and and working too, you know, where the average one will fix the existing unit. Oh, okay. No So you're replacing to the heating? It's a full full replacement We made multiple band aid attempts last year. Right, right. We will continue to do that if there are issues as it goes along. The program is to replace the entire system. We don't have any time frame for that yet. Once we get the bond, then we have to send it out for bids and then all the bands are going to start to work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Marshall, 67 New Room. Uh, before I get into what I really want to discuss, I want to thank you, Mary. I know you and I have had our discussions on a couple of things over the uh, years, but I've seen you more and more recently starting to question a little bit, and, and from a public standpoint, from a resident standpoint, we appreciate that. Thank you. But what I'm going to bring up is, I, I don't know if you had a chance, I sent uh, a month or two to four years to all of you today uh, through your township emails uh, in reference to the dollar store issue. 
Pardon? I'm not too soon. Uh, excuse me? What time? It probably was after around 5 o'clock. It was after I got done work. Okay. Uh, and that was just basically talking about some of the things that uh, were going on. I've got all the different meeting dates. I can go over those, but it's going to take a lot of time of... Nine different times when I asked about, asked Mr. Finley and I asked about things to be resolved and remedied on it. Uh, and I was told different things from everything. We were having meetings and owners and different things that after my wife, after Bonnie sent one, it looks like there was a response right away where the building inspector went out and said that he didn't see these issues. It looks like they've already cleaned it up. But of course, as soon as I got it, I went out and nothing's changed. The property is exactly the same style that it's always been. There's trash all over. You'll see it from every picture I sent him to YouTube. The islands are overgrown. I know that's a, a, a problem when somebody doesn't maintain the property. I mean, you walk through there, you're going to get ticks on your legs. It's outside bad. The lights are still blinking on and off. I mean, it's, it's, it is an absolute spy. I know I've been out back before, so I went out back. I was surprised at the fence and the, how bad it is. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, no, it's just the fence in the back. Most of them are dead. The poor gentleman that was behind there had to build a wall to block his deck so he could sit out there and lights because the headlights hit his house so bad. I mean, it's sad. I spoke with them. They don't want to be able to find the plane here. They have to abide by. Yeah. Okay. There's a privacy yeah. fence and giant yeah. sections are missing, so they have to replace that. And it doesn't look like their basin's maintained at all. The dollar store across from the cellar, I mean, they, they can only get deliveries at certain times of the day. And you drive by there, and I know they're not supposed to get deliveries while that store is moving. So, is it tough and hard? Yeah, it comes with a way to talk about that, so it's the same thing. So I, I think we need to you know, start having these guys start looking at that stuff and start fixing So we need to look at the fence and vegetation. The lighting thing was, is a little more difficult because they have to go out there at night and look at it. Do uh, you have any videos of that? It's not only videos of that, but I it's easy enough. Right now they're flicking like strobe lights. But I'm lit, my backyard is lit, like a football field. And they have LED lights? What's that? And they have LED lights? And they have LED lights? And I mean, it was disgustingly bright. I mean, I understand the security standpoint, but they can have one of them on it. That makes that whole point a lot. They got some of them on it. They need to put the reflectors on, too, so it's not that easy. And then the approval is that they have to do a lighting study. I think this is my concern. I had asked Matt to ask the guys at night to check it. And I have Bobby Marsh Yard out in the glass area chasing down there. And before I got back into the email, they were telling me to do I from the road, it, they look like they cleaned up some trash and stuff, but the back is... Well, the front looks cleaned up, it's going to know it. They know the trash. I, I, that's what I mean. Like, the front, if you don't pull around back, you're, you're going to be surprised. I mean, he's... But actually, you came to the plane for... I sent out here based on the right, which I saw that from I got an email back from him telling me there was there was some trash on the roadway areas on the new room, I guess Dusty Drive. But he thought that was more litter, but he said he walked to the manager and stuff. And I said your wife the information I know. the owners were the owner. I wouldn't be here talking about everything was fixed. No, I, I, I did other things I'd rather do with my time. I got you. Uh, and, and I just again this this is just one property in the township as we've talked about, you know, more of this. And it's I know everybody's busy, but if it doesn't get fixed on that side, you're going to keep seeing me up here every time trying to fix it on this side. Well, there, there's people here in the audience that have gotten letters from myself and from Archie, and they've had to get a problem and stuff like that. So we'll be addressing more. All right, and I just said, I'm not trying to say anything. Okay, we'll take a ride out the right. bar together. All right, yeah, please, because if he's seeing it and he says it's cleaned up, there needs to be, you know, an, an investigation or maybe a, you know, vision, I see plan, something. I mean, because it's not. Okay. I'm, I'm not picking on excuse. No, no. But if you, if you miss this trash, then, I mean, he was an investigator, the, the detective, and it's, it just makes me concerned about his cases. I don't have an email. Okay, yeah, I went to the township one. Well, it's supposed to be sent through, so. Unless they put it in stand because of all the pictures are attached. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was, I'm guessing, I guess I'm trying to think of what time it was, it was after work, so 5 to 5.30, somewhere's in there. Let me check my check. Yeah, I don't know. It's not on mine. I'm running it down. The mine's not in there either. Might not have too many pictures or something. That's one of the things that's up to that way. But that's, I mean, we don't need the pictures. No, I've got, I, I'll be honest with you, I never drove in the back. When I drove in the back, I was surprised. Well, I'm not a bad kid. 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 I'm
Mr. Doyle's political ad, why do we need a bond then to get a 200k HVAC system put in it, and why would we have to wait when... Because we're not going to bond on that. Well, okay, well, on, on the fact that, as they were saying, they're going to fly before they see an HVAC, if we have a $2 million surplus, why even wait? We know we have to do it. So, for the sake of the employees and the general public, I don't see a reason we have to wait, um, but that's something you have to deal with. Um, in selling lots in the residential zone, especially the two on Grant Avenue, across from the horse farm where Washington Avenue comes in, you know, you're selling the lots to, re to give you more tax money, I assume. That's been the excuse before. Well, those lots easily could be several homes. Uh, they could be subdivided, especially the 12-acre lot. Homes could be built on these lots, even though there's substantial wetlands in the back, there's space in the front where there's dumping. Um, so we all know that when you build homes, you can't recoup uh, the cost of services from the taxes that you get. So economically, it's a lose-lose to sell lots that you know will land up becoming homes. Um, also, and you don't lose when you keep land, forested land, and other lands you know, not just farmland preservation, you're doing nothing to preserve forested land. You're doing nothing about the Greenway, which is part of a master plan. You know, you sit here and tell, oh, we preserve, we preserve, but it's only farms, the public can't use that. I'm not against farmland preservation, but let's get a robust saving of lots that are only going to cost us money in the long run and are there to give us air, clean water, and a place for people to get away from the constant hum of traffic and development. Um, I was also disturbed to hear a resident uh, use the administrator's comments at the cannabis hearing before the zoning board. I don't understand why um, you would be showing people cannabis facility locations in the first place, but yet let alone then make comments disparaging against uh, cannabis and then have them put on the record by a resident. Talking about an application prior to a hearing is inappropriate in my opinion and could legally come back to haunt us. Um, I also don't understand why the administrator just doesn't give a list, you know, or whatever, or someone else's town hall of these are the properties that are, you know, that the township owns that you could consider. They're business people, they're, they're land specking to begin with, why can't they show themselves? Don't we have enough personnel and other matters to deal with the town hall that, you know, they need an escort from the town? This is highly irregular and, in my opinion, not a suitable use of our resources. Thank you. Thank you. Still Nancy Kennedy, 711 St. George Street. I just had a couple topics that I wanted to touch on tonight. In the lead up, up to the primary, there were a lot of questions that were raised of the Township Committee, the Planning Board, the Zoning Board. Specifically, have we yet received the letter from Michael Borelli regarding the properties in the proposed redevelopment zone? Have, no. have we gotten that yet? No. Okay. So you said that will be I'm sorry? Don't think there's going to be a letter. You don't think he's going to send it? I don't think he's going to be a letter. No. Okay. You need to look from the council to me. Right. Okay. Okay, so we can, I can bring that up at the planning board, but I appreciate Candor and letting me know that he has not yet done okay. what the planning board asked him to do. So that's... No, I'm sorry? No, it's not much. It's not much at all. Yes. That's just me that I'm answering to the planning board. Oh, okay, so I completely misunderstood. So, no, no, so Mike like Burley asked and the township committee is refusing yeah. to respond. Now, when you were quite, and Jake, I don't know if you were here, when the sitting members that 
evening were questioned on the township committee about whether they would respond, three people responded that they would. What changed? Township committee people? We just haven't, we don't have to answer that. Like, we've already answered that question. But I don't know what Jim Kelly's trying to get at. But we, that question has already been answered. And we'll talk about it next Thursday at the planning board. Okay, well, I look forward to that. Um, did you have a chance to catch the zoning board meeting uh, where Michael Borelli indicated that they illegally voted in an executive session uh, regarding the land that Mr. Doyle farms? And it's funny because Ms. Vassell had brought that up numerous times, like, hey, how the heck did you guys appeal this decision when no vote was ever taken? And then magically two days after the primary, I see that. Oh, you, should, you should check it out. It's really right. riveting stuff. So apparently an illegal vote was taken in close at the zoning board to file an appeal regarding the land that Mr. Doyle farms. Was that last zoning board meeting? Yes. Yes. And that was, I believe, I believe Thursday, but my days are a little mixed up. And that brings me to my third and final topic, which is I do have, and I'm not going to discuss because it is litigation and I actually am not the attorney on the matter, I do have a pending lawsuit related to OPRA. I recently filed a request for an OPRA request seeking legal bills. I want to see legal bills. I'm a resident of the township. I'm entitled to see legal bills. Uh, so I think anybody's denying you. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to make sure everybody's on the same page. So approximately eight days ago, seven days ago, I filed the request. I did receive on day seven a, a response back that said that the bills would be forthcoming at the end of June, I believe June 30th. I responded and I said I do not believe that's appropriate. I'm asking the township committee to please check with legal counsel to see how we can work this out so that another lawsuit does not have to be filed. I just want to see the legal bills because it's my belief that we're spending an absolute fortune unnecessarily and I would very much like the opportunity to see those numbers. And unlike Mr. Kelly, who I have the utmost respect for, he has a life, I'll be here every meeting until the election. So, Mr. Jim Kelly, he made a request that he hasn't had the opportunity to come to this forum yet. So please, just, just let the residents be transparent. Let the residents see what they're entitled to sign that. Certainly includes legal bills. Thanks, Jake. Yep. Hello. Uh, Leah Vitale, 560 Delsey Drive again. Um, I was planning to speak about something else, but I have to talk about the issue you brought up where you said that you don't feel the need to respond. You are speaking for the board, but you don't feel the need to respond to the inquiry from the planning board about where the redevelopment partials came from. Now, the, the thing that I find so ironic about that is both you and Mr. Doyle voted for the planning board to send that letter to the township committee. Uh, yeah, 100%. Because it was unanimous. Everyone said, yes, send the letter. So you and Tim voted to send the letter from the planning board. And then when you and Tim weren't here at the meeting, I specifically asked... Mike sent them a letter. He sent you a letter. He sent you a letter. He, he, re he responded to the council that that wasn't Jim Kelly's argument. Well, that, that wasn't what he asked for. Because Jim Kelly's not going to defend himself, but that wasn't so, the case when he went back and forth. And I don't know. So, but originally, the idea was that you were behind the idea of finding out where the, the uh, parcels came from. If you were not, then I that's mean, fine. I knew we were not. But you voted yes. Separately, when you and Tim were not here, I specifically asked each committee member, if you get this request, are you going to answer it? Do you guys remember that conversation? And every other committee member said, yes, of course, if the planning board feels they need information, we should provide it to them. We're not competing interests. So I just find it bizarre that now... You know what? I uh, have a conversation. Well, yeah, you should, because it's a board decision. But it's not... We yeah. should be Let's not beat up on Mike. Well, there's a little something shady going on there. It's my word of the day, shady. I'll tell you what, I heard a lot of shady. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give one, 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 one more shady. I'll be at the CS. John, uh, Jake, I'm going to give one more shady. Go ahead. Uh, the appeal. The appeal that Nancy referenced that the zoning board took an appeal. You had a 4-3 split in the original decision of the zoning board where they determined and interpreted whether a commercial solar farm was an allowable use on the Grachowski property, which Tim Doyle farms. They voted fourth way and said it was not the fourth vote being an employee of Tim Doyle's family business. Okay? And Mr. Burrell is recommending that it be a no, even though he's worked privately for Mr. Doyle. You have all these things at play. 
applicant sues the township and wins, the judge says, no, that is an approved use for that zone, then you have the zoning board enter on e-courts that they're appealing the decision before a vote has ever been taken, and then you have them come out at the last meeting and ratify the decision that was made three weeks before. Wow. My question is this. Uh, besides the absurdity of appealing an inherently beneficial use and costing the taxpayers tons of money, both in legal fees and in lost revenue, because you can't be so pro-business when it's a warehouse on the wetlands, but anti-business when it's a sort of farm on an already cleared property. Um, how is that, how is that paid for? I mean, the, the zoning board doesn't have its own budget, right? I mean, I guess I'm looking at UPAC because I don't know that anyone else would know the answer, but the, that comes out of the township budget, right? If the zoning board appeals, well, someone has to pay, and the zoning board doesn't have a bucket of money. Gotcha. So, my question is, does that require some sort of approval from the township committee, or does the zoning board have absolute discretion and unlimited budget to spend whatever they want on legal fees? Well, I think someone should look into it because it's it's a rather bizarre situation. Thank you. But now that we have the lawyers here, my name is Cindy Marks. Okay, I I was at that zoning board meeting. Mm -hmm. What I the recent the recent one. And what Mr. Borelli said in addition to that was that the reason they were in closed session and took that vote was it was to do with his strategy. So he wanted them to vote, okay, inside because that was the strategy to not, I guess, when they go to court, so that he had that kind of a consensus. And that's the word he used. Now, I've always, as in, you know, doing this for 20 years as a reporter, we were told that they always had to come out to vote. However, I understand that attorneys do have to have where they might tell you, look, our strategy is going to be this way, so I want to get a consensus. I know I've got three lawyers in the room, so I'm going to take advantage of legal guidance and what to find out what is the actual truth here. Are they allowed to have you know, a kind of a, let's appeal this, or their decision. Is that something that you're requesting them in closed session? Whether it be personnel, whether it be uh, a lawsuit that you have coming up? Are you not going to answer it? And why aren't you going to answer it? Yes, you're talking about a situation that might have happened if the zoning board was involved with that. Correct. That was the master of the zoning board representing the entity. There are even discussions that happen in the executive session. The zoning board action is going to be taken and the action is going to be taken in the zoning board session. Correct. But not everything can be defined in action. So, for instance, it's called the general reality of the zoning board. Certainly, if I'm involved in the litigation, Yes. The, the, the real lawyer answer should have been the pen, so it should be shown. But it's, there's a lot of 
He did put it in writing. I mean, it is in the minutes. So what I'm saying is, is in, in the minutes that uh, she provided to the board, it does say the word strategy. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it, it's a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is It is in that. Just to, just my curiosity. Thank you. Kennedy, 1578, and uh, I'm the only one in my family that's not a lawyer. An uncle that was a professor at Penn, a uh, brother that was a judge, a uh, daughter that was a judge, a prosecutor, a public defender, so on and so forth. But I'd be happy to answer for Pat, and uh, Pat, Pat did a great job. He's a great lawyer. I hope he gets paid by the hour. No, you cannot take action in a private session. You must come in to open a public session and vote on an action. That's three years of government. You have to vote in public. They did not vote in public. I guess uh, for whatever reason, they decided not to vote in public. But I do understand, again, just at second hand, because I obviously wasn't at the meeting, that uh, this time Mr. Hamill did abstain from the vote, which was very wise, uh, as opposed to not the first time. But again, that was an illegal action, Jake. Very clearly, very obviously, very poignantly an illegal action. Now, whether somebody wants to refer that to the appropriate people in the state for a violation of the Sunshine Law for not taking action in a public session, that's up to them. I'm feeling somebody will. They'll, they'll file a complaint with the Office of the Comptroller. Okay. I, 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 I don't doubt it either, but there should have been, I mean, you, you've been the mayor for a couple of terms now. You don't take action without a vote in public, uh, the same way you did it. You went back in private session, you had a very, uh, somewhere longer than 10 minutes discussion about discipline, right. And you said it would be longer than 10, you were right. Uh, you had that discussion, you came out, and my God, your lawyer, Mr. Madden, recommended that you vote on it in public, and which is exactly what you did. Very appropriate, done the right way. The zoning board didn't do it so well for whatever reason, whether it was strategic, as George Bush would say, whether it was because it was before the primary, whether it was because you have a zoning board chairman who's been there for 30 years and a solicitor who's been there for 20 and didn't understand the law. It was just one of those funny circumstances. The big words, city collusion, whatever you want to believe. You believe what you want to believe. They just didn't vote on it in public. It must have been a mistake. It must have been an oversight. Mr. Mike must have just forgot about what the law was, like not understanding what the planning board said. I went back, my fifth graders could have understood what the planning board said. But again, Mr. Barone didn't understand. Obfuscation is a great skill. Lawyers are getting paid by the hour are very good at it. I congratulate them, but again, Jake, you still have to vote in public. And for whatever reason, you didn't do it. Oh, well. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> the planning board didn't. Thank you. Well, clear field of evidence. That's a tough act to follow. Um, I just want to make a comment regarding uh, the solar field idea. Um, somebody said how wonderfully uh, environmental it was. If you look at a lot of research about solar fields, they are not the answer for an environmental issue. Uh, solar fields with that kind of density create a microclimate. And the panels, the amount of energy that they um, absorb, they only spend 15% of that energy producing electricity. The rest of it is heat that is dissipated at ground level maybe 20 feet from ground and up. This is a cause of a lot of weather disruptions. You can do the research. I could give you files this thick for it. So have a farm there, whether it's farmed by somebody on tantrum committee or somebody else, it doesn't matter. But having a farm is more environmentally correct than a solar field. Has anyone heard how the county meeting went today as far as the electrical lines that are trying to disrupt more farming and over into Scotland Run Park? Anybody? So, yes, what was the answer? Looking into it. 
Okay. Right, thank you. They probably got the water. What? They got the water? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Chris Sayers, 184 Malibu Lake Boulevard. Um, that's pretty of you, ladies and gentlemen, in the hot seat, but what, what's your position on marijuana cultivation facilities in this town? This, this public person is for any comment, so. Okay. okay. I mean, you can ask them if they don't want to answer, you don't want to answer. Does anybody choose to answer? I just... Uh, what's I mean, your name? Not oh, everybody voted on that ordinance. There are new people out here. Now, what, what's your position on uh, marijuana cultivation, cultivation facility? Not not retail sales, but cultivation in Franklin Township. I don't mind. You don't mind it. Okay. okay with it. I voted on it. Yeah. In the right place, the right project. It was fine. Okay. I support what we voted on previously, but we'll be open to discuss. No, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Just my concern is the past two zoning board meetings have been, I wouldn't say a circus, but the, the residents of the community have been really fired up if, you, if you've looked at those zoning board meetings. And I think a lot of that stems from confusion surrounding the ordinance that was voted on previously. And from my understanding, you had to vote on that ordinance before state regulations were even put into effect. So I don't blame you for that, for that lack of clarity. But is there any um, any plan on amending the ordinances to add clarity? Like, for instance, maybe not have these close to elementary schools. Maybe, like, put some more stipulations in the ordinance. That's not here, but I asked that question because we did have to vote on it when there was no rules, regulations out. Yes. It seemed crazy to me as well. And I, what he had told me, if I understood him correctly, was there was a two or three year window before you could change it. Now, I don't know legally, is if I have, there was a time frame. So not only did they make you vote before the rules were out, they gave you a yeah, the off there. Yeah. Well, what was it, 2020? So we have two more years of this? It's 2021, thank you. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it seems like, unfortunately, it's a waste of energy. It puts the zoning board members in the hot seat um, when residents come up here and, and express their concerns for um, marijuana cultivation in the township. And it's just something that, you know, apparently, if you can't do this for the next couple of years, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the residents who have to deal with it and for the zoning board members who have to deal with variances and, and other situations. Um, but it's certainly something that I, I wish you would look into. Um, and making certain, um, again, like um, zoning requirements, distances to schools, to certain facilities. I do believe um, we went on record and said exactly what we specified for okay. not being near schools. I know okay. I did. And that could be the last one. Yeah, the past two zoning board meetings that we've had, there's been a lot of crowded crowded on that. I remember every person that spoke was wanted more lenient rules. They wanted retail, another guy wanted delivery. A couple different people wanted retail, um, so we, we were on the conservative side of... You're talking about the initial vote? Yeah. Okay, okay. I think you're talking about the zoning board meetings. No, no, I wasn't at the zoning board meetings. Yeah, and I understand. And look, I'm not coming down from an anti-marijuana cultivation or pro-cultivation. I'm just concerned that there's a lot of confusion and the, the residents seem like they're concerned as well. And um, any clarity in the future would certainly be appreciated. And I thank you for that. So, thank you. Any motion to close the second public portion? Motion to close second public portion. Second. Madam Father? Aye. Move it for us. John? Communications Committee is going to meet tomorrow, and uh, we are currently close to finishing up phase one of our design for the website, and we will be entering phase two of the website redesign, which um, basically is substantially meaning that we're going to do a different type of work. But uh, progress is being made on the job to do about second time. So thank everybody for uh, participating in the communications. Thank you to um, our vendors and everybody else out that. And uh, thank you to um, everybody who came out for expressing your opinions tonight. And we had a lot on the agenda, so we had a lot to read. And, you know, I did take everything that you guys had to say to, to heart. I do listen. Um, so I do appreciate everything you say, and as always, 
feel free to send me an email on my friend from Township uh, from an email and just uh, if you have any other concerns, you want to reach out to me directly. Definitely feel free to do that. And uh, Economic Development Committee will not meet this month. Thank you. Do I have any committee reports? What? Well, I'm not committee reports, but I want to uh, comment on one of our officers that they did this past week uh, on his way into work. He, uh, he saved the life of a, a person who was in a car accident. He lost his, uh, he lost a lot of blood. Very bad uh, accident with his leg. He's in his personal car, so with the limited resources that he had coming into work in his personal car, he was able to save this person's life, and save his life, according to the doctors at the oh. hospital. So what's going on? Good morning, Mr. Rambo. Mr. Rambo did a great job. Who gets the paper? Who gets the Listen, I don't have any better man. That's also Cassie Messina. Oh, oh, sorry, Cassie Messina. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. I'll never be a soccer You know what he said? You got that right. <laughs> We're almost our way to go. Yes, he did a great job. He didn't even have to stop. Think about that. He was in his own personal car coming into work, and he still went out of his way. Heard on the radio and heard it from that accident. <laughs> So just, just to add on to that, part of that also was very ironic because after Officer Schiffer unfortunately passed away and he was shot, but he lived for as long as he did, turning to being applied by the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Deputy Chief Cesare and I did training in May for all of our officers to turn to training called Stop and Read. So they were all taught, they were all given tourniquets, I'm sure Steve has them on, he's on him right there. And within a couple of days of that, that's when this accident happened at Tucko, Dutch Mill, they ran a boat went to it. And he did indeed save the gentleman's life. Mm-hmm. Had he not been, the gentleman lost his life. Had he not been there, the gentleman would have lost his life. Mm-hmm. The, the parents of the victim already came in the police department. Mm-hmm. They are so thankful. Unfortunately, their, their son is in rehab. But the first thing he wants to do when he leaves is come meet the grandfather for safety. And based on that, the grand photo of our office was not to deputy chief assessor. So I have to report it to the office. He's security. Um, well, he just stole my thunder with announcing the officer of the month. <laughs> Um, looking forward to police week and um, aside from that, then none of this time. Yeah, I have nothing. Um, it's been a lot of fun. But I appreciate you coming out to me. We did a lot. Go ahead. You're not afraid of it. You're not afraid of it. Um, an officer that did that. Uh, thank you for approval of the, the couple resolutions tonight for public works. Uh, the DEP is becoming bucket center with a lot of stuff. Uh, the stormwater grant that we are applying for, which we should have no problem getting, uh, will come in two phases. That grant will get $15,000 once approved probably almost immediately. Uh, we be able to use that money towards the GIS mapping of all our stormwater facilities. Uh, it's, it's a big task, but between the department, Mr. Finley and CMA, I think we have a plan going forward where we'll be able to purchase a relatively affordable software plan and do a lot of this work in the house once it's actually set up. So once we get this GIS mapping done, we'll get the additional ten thousand dollars from the DEP. So it's it's a it's a little bit of a process, but this is a nice program going forward. And unfortunately, our our stormwater needs a lot of attention. So. Uh, so we should be ready. Good.
so we're going to do a redevelopment of the of the Yeah. 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 It's, it's five to six pages. Yes, yeah. It's it's very, it's okay. gonna be very time consuming. The grant, the grant, the grant is it's it's basically a one. I will tell you, it's it, it's there. They are going to help you, right? Kind of you got a box with three chapters and one grant. What two years, three years? The program that we're going to use, uh, I've already had a little bit of experience with it. I'm already using it in another town. Uh, I like the way it works. A lot of uh, us public works managers have been in contact, and we're, we're all kind of on the same page with, with doing it. So, and it's it's affordable, uh, but it is going to take time from our employees, and it's going to be it's going to be a big project. Okay. Hi, I've got the Chief Assessor's monthly report. I've talked about the training and also the uh, calls for service total 4,679. Of those calls, 3,465 for Franklin Township, 936 for Buda, 278 for Newfield, a total of 108 arrests, 96 in Franklin Township, 10 in Buda, 2 in Newfield. 10 DWI arrests, 7 in Franklin, 3 in Buna. Total of 2016 motor vehicle stop, 173% increase from the same time last year. And they issued 1,523 tickets, which is a 402% increase from the same time last year. All of that also led to reduction of motor vehicle crashes by 8%. In addition to the training they attended, Actions. Police Youth Week starts on Monday, June 17th. Uh, there are 17 kids. The Unit Ice Cream event is scheduled for June 28th. The resolutions tonight, National Night Out, is scheduled for August 1st. And Alice Mann, a 23 year old adult male who lives with autism, will be visiting the Franklin Council Police Station on Thursday, April 4th. Alex has visited almost 400 police departments in the tri-state area to spread awareness to law enforcement and officers regarding our interaction with individuals with autism. So, Frank Cash, the command staff, and officers look forward to visiting the local area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. All right, Heather. Relax. We told me to relax. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All the door. Aye. 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 Aye.